Welcome to the Trip Tales podcast with me, Kelsey Graves. Let's jump into a new episode exploring a vacation destination that you'll want all the details about. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 22 of Trip Tales. Today is a fun one because we are going to be talking about a couple resorts that you might not even know exist. I was actually talking to my husband the other night about this episode, and he was like, what are you talking about? I had no idea about these places. We are talking all about two resorts, which are part of Disney, but not in Orlando or California. These two resorts are called Disney's Beach Resorts because they are located on beaches, and they are in Vero Beach, Florida, and Hilton Head Island. And to help us understand the difference between these two resorts, everything there is to love, and what Disney magic exists at these beachfront resorts is Courtney Gibson, who has been to both locations a handful of times. Welcome, Courtney. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So fun fact, if you listen to episode 16 of Trip Tales, all about my guest Jessica's magical sailing on the Disney Wish cruise ship, Courtney, who's here with us today, planned that Disney cruise for Jessica's family. She was their travel planner. And in the episode, Jessica raves about how amazing of a job Courtney did planning their Disney cruise. So that is a fun connection point between episodes. So Courtney, we always start with a rapid fire get to know you. So tell everyone where you live, what you do, and about your family. Yeah, so I am in South Carolina and um, married with three kids. My daughter is 11, and then I have two boys, nine and six, and I am a full-time travel agent, and I specialize in Disney and Universal vacations, so that includes the Universal Parks, Disney Parks, Disney Cruise Line, and then even the Disney Beach Resorts. Awesome. Yes, and as I said, Jessica had so many amazing things to say about you with her Disney cruise. And I've actually had multiple people listen to those episodes and decide they were going to book their first Disney cruise. So it's all exciting things. Yes. I love Disney cruise line so much. It is um, a great way to get the Disney magic in a more relaxed pace. (laughs) Yes. So today we're talking about two lovely Disney resorts that are not located near the theme parks, but instead on some beautiful beaches. I was doing some research and learned that back in the 90s, Disney considered building out its Disney Vacation Club, the DVC we all talk about, and wanted to offer resorts across the country. Um, They didn't continue with a ton of these, but they do still have Disney's Vero Beach Resort in Florida and Disney's Hilton Head Island Resort. I've actually been to Disney's Vero Beach once as a teen. I actually still remember some of it. And when I was looking up and doing my research, I was like, I remember that water slide. So my parents took me there, but I haven't returned to either of them as an adult. So I know you've been to both. Do you have a preference on which one we dive into first? I don't. So if you do, we can do whatever your preference is. Okay, let's do Vero then. Um, Since I've been there, We went on a family trip here. Um, I don't remember a ton, but I do remember the like sandcastle looking water slide. I remember the pool being shaped like Mickey, which I just thought was so cool. And I remember like one nice, maybe slightly large hot tub because it was the first time my parents had let me as like a teen hang out like while they were in their room. And I like met all these cool friends and I just remember having the best time. So tell us the overall vibe of this resort. Yeah, I would say that if you have been to a deluxe resort at Walt Disney World, when you walk into Disney's Vero Beach Resort, it's going to feel familiar in a really great way. You walk into um, a lobby, you're greeted by the cast members, you have the the restaurants, the gift shops right off of it. It's There's something very familiar of it. And then you walk out and there's the beach, which, you know, you're taking my two favorite loves of Disney and the beach and combining those. So I just think it's the most magical place there is. Um, It's small. Everything is very compact, which as a mom with three, not so little kids anymore, but still young kids, I really appreciate that about it. It's very family friendly. What you would expect from Disney in that they've just thought about families in everything that they've done. It felt like as you walk from place to place, they thought about how can we make this the easiest possible for families. So everything is so convenient from the location of the pool, just steps away from the beach to the restaurants, to the rooms. It's just simple, which I love in a, in a Disney beach vacation or a beach vacation. 
Well, and what you're saying makes me think maybe that is why I have this memory as it being the first time my parents were like, you know, we feel comfortable with you hanging out with these other new friends you've met that we can see you from here. You're just around the corner or whatnot. So maybe they had that same feeling where it was like, oh, we feel safe here. It's not the sprawling resort and we feel okay with our like tween or teen kids kind of going off on their own to explore a little bit. So that's interesting that you said that. Well, and it was funny, we can get into more how the you know resort is structured, but where we stayed just last month in June, um, our villa actually looked out at the pool. So as you were talking, I was thinking, okay, you know, in a couple of years when my, my daughter's a little bit older, I think I would have felt comfortable. I was, you know, could sit out on our patio and you're watching the pool. And I think they would have thought that was great. So that's yeah. cool. Um, let's talk about the location real quick before we get into too much about the resort. So it's on the Atlantic side of Florida. It's about two hours southeast of Orlando. So I was trying to figure out what airport would be best to fly into for this resort or do most people drive from like Orlando? For us, we drive. You drive it's from about a South seven Carolina. Hour drive for yeah. us. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're big, we are big drivers just in general. We like to take a lot of things, especially on beach vacations. So we do drive for other people, you know, if you're combining it with like a a cruise, you could also look at flying into Fort Lauderdale, uh, Miami, if you were doing a cruise there, and then it's actually just, you know, um even less time getting up. So that would be another option. All right. You talked about like the overall feel of arriving and the general layout of the resort. Let's talk about the rooms. Um, like what kind of a vibe do they have? I was looking online. It maybe seemed like a classic beach vibe. Yeah. And they've been more recently renovated. So they're really inviting, bright, beachy theme with not being like overly cheesy. Um, they're really light and airy. And they've done such a great job in this renovation with maximizing all of the space. So if you are familiar with any of the villas in the Disney Vacation Club properties at Walt Disney World, again, you'll feel kind of right at home here. The studios, the one bedroom villas, the two bedroom villas, they're all set up th that same way. Um, but they they just have a lot of space, really open. I could not believe how big we were in a two bedroom villa. The second bedroom was, it was massive. And so just really nice space as well. Awesome. Good to know. And while we're touching on um, Disney Vacation Club, we keep saying that I want to make sure that we explain how these resorts work. Are they just for DVC, Disney Vacation Club people? Can an average person like me book a room? So kind of explain how these work with DVC and regular people and that whole thing. Yeah. So DVC, Disney Vacation Club is Disney's flexible timeshare that you can you know, buy a contract with and you're getting points. And so um, for Disney Vacation Club members, they buy into a home resort. And so for them, they're able to book different resorts based on what their home resort is at 11 months, or they can book anywhere else uh, that's not their home resort at seven months. And so at certain resorts, um, Disney has more availability just up front that they sell as cash bookings. So for example, Disney's Riviera Resort at Walt Disney World. Um, that's one that that almost always just anyone could get on and book right away. Some of these others like the beach resorts, they, they fill up quicker with the Disney Vacation Club members. They're very popular. And so you never are going to be able to book outside of that 11 month window. No one can, not even Vacation Club members. For people like you and me who are not DVC owners, our best bet of getting into these places is in that like below seven month mark when more availability becomes available. And sometimes it can be fairly random. Um, I was able to book us, we're going back to Disney's Hilton Head Island in October over our fall break. And I was able to book it in May. So that's what, six months out, May to October. Um, and then, you know, it just kind of depends. You just have to watch it. A lot of times if properties are not filling up, more availability will be released and you can get in kind of last minute. So you just have to keep an eye on them. And this is where someone like you is kind of helpful because you can keep an eye on them if we're not, you know, we're not always on Disney websites all day long, but you probably are. So you can probably keep an eye out for people if they're generally knowing a time frame they want to be at one of these places. Absolutely. And I do try to send out just even through my social media when I see something pop up for 
a holiday break that we have letting people know, oh, you know, jump on this really fast. It will not last long. And then sometimes I will have people send me a specific date, like, hey, will you keep your eye, you know, out if you see this? And sometimes it is more last minute. Um, I will say it's a lot easier to get into Hilton Head Island in the off season. We can talk more about that when we get to Hilton Head, but just because it gets a lot cooler there. Um, that is one, uh, some of the amenities there close. And so depending on what kind of vacation you're looking for, it, it can be much easier to get into Hilton Head. Okay. Got it. All right. So let's get back to the Vero Beach property. Um, so they have maybe a couple pools, one main pool. Tell us about their pools or their splash pad areas and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So they have one main pool that is fantastic. And it was so funny hearing you talk about it because it's like, it's still the same and it's adorable with this uh, Mickey sandcastle water slide. That's really fun. A uh, giant pool. And then one thing that I really appreciate is plenty of seating, cushioned lounge chairs, plenty of tables and chairs and umbrellas. I just really value all of that. I don't want to have to hunt for a chair on vacation. So plenty of that all around. There is still a hot tub there. You'll be pleased to know right beside the main pool. And then right behind the main pool in a separate gated area, they have a really cute Peter Pan pirate ship themed um, splash pad for cute. younger children. And it is great that you can go back and forth, but also that is a separately fenced in area. And then on the other side of that, you even have a mini golf right there. So I just love how compact everything is, you know, in that area. The cast members there are fantastic in that, especially in the afternoons, they have, you know, the the games, the challenges that you're used to seeing at Disney resorts going on the whole time from the water slide races to, you know, games in the pool. Um, so that's, you know, really fun. I also appreciate the lifeguards are so on it. I don't know if you've experienced that like at Walt Disney World. It's like, I don't have to worry about anything because these people are on it. And that yes. is certainly and you better case. like not get in their There's way no. because they're like, excuse me, you're in my path of walking. I'm like, oh my gosh, do your job. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Well, and we've laughed because we've even had a few instances where they've like, I've been there watching my children and they've jumped in when our kids were younger to, to save one of my kids were like, oh, it's fine. but it's like, I'm so glad that they were, you know, they saw something that made them jump in. So I always feel just an extra dose of like, I can relax. <laughs> yes. Wait, you said I've been to a handful of Disney resorts and seen all the fun um, activities they run by the pools, but I've never been one at one where they have a water slide race. What is that one? Yeah. So they literally have someone timing it. We've seen this um, at both at both Hilton Head and Vero, um, and a couple of the Walt Disney World resorts as well. They typically divide it into kids versus adults, I guess, to just keep it fair, right? And, and then they literally time you going down and they like announce it and they have a winner. It's adorable. Oh my gosh. My middle son, nine-year-old boy would absolutely love a water slide race. He would be like the most competitive in that. That's so fun. Yeah. You could like watch and see, okay, what's the strategy? How do you have to, you know, go down the slide to get, get the best time? So- Cute. So there's a lot of fun activities going on around the pools. There's a mini golf, mini putt putt golf course right there, which is such a crowd pleaser for families. And then is the beach kind of right there? Yes. This is my favorite part at, at Vera Beach is that there are two private beach access points and they're literally just steps away from that main pool. So you're exiting the main pool gate. You are walking literally just across a sidewalk and then you are going down the boardwalk to the beach. Amazing. Um, and I'm assuming there's beach chairs. Do you have to rent those separate or is that just kind of part of your stay? You do have to rent those separately. The pricing was really reasonable. I was pretty surprised about how reasonable it was to rent those for the day. The place that you rent them, when you walk down, it's just right there on your left. And they have some different options. You can get like two loungers, two loungers with a um, covering. They call it a cabana, but just like kind of a shaded covering over you. And then you get those for the whole day. Nice. And they'll, you know, they set it up for you and everything. Yeah, it's really convenient. Um, one thing that did, because I had not been before, what surprised me is the beach is not very wide. So that would be one thing that I would note to people who are big beach people is I think this resort has to, for you, be more about the whole experience, right? The fact that you're able to go from the pools to the beach and enjoy the, you know, your kids are getting able to be out there, get in the ocean play in the sand, sit, but it's just not as wide as, as most beaches that I'm used to. So knowing, just knowing what you're getting into there. Good to know. 
Um, I also read that in the summertime, there's a lot of sea turtle nesting and they even have some sort of activities where they'll kind of show you about, show you them and take you down to the beach and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So this was actually my favorite part when we were there in June. They had, when when you first arrive, you get that activity calendar like you're used to getting at, at any Disney resort you stay in with all of the activities for the whole day. And from, I think I actually wrote it down so I made sure to remember, from April until October, they actually have a conservationist there who is monitoring five miles of beach. And they're checking every morning to see, you know, um, they're tracking everything, they mark them, they're watching the nesting. And so when we were there, the day we arrived, the um, cast member who was there was doing like lectures where you could do Q&A. And then every morning you could go on a sea turtle walk with them. And we, we did it the, um, the first morning we were there and it was so fun. And so they actually had someone who was there from um, the aquarium at Epcot was also there doing training. And they did this amazing, I learned so much about sea turtles. And that was when I thought I was actually, this was with a girl trip when I was just there. And I texted my husband. I was like, we have to come back ne next summer with the kids. Like I want to come when this is going on because they would just eat it up. It was so amazing. And so many different opportunities to learn and, um, and just get that one-on-one -on -one experience with cast members. Super cool. That's very cool. I love hearing that. Um, and then and it that looks was like all included. Oh, amazing. It looks like you can also maybe rent bikes or play tennis. Does that ring a bell? Yes, it does. So they had bikes. And, and again, it was so cool in that when you're at the main pool complex, where you sign up for any recreation, where you check out complimentary balls for tennis, basketball, all of that, it's all right there. And you can also rent bikes. Um, they had an hourly rate, which was $7 an hour, or you can rent them for the whole day for $17. Nice. So Sounds like a lot of good they, activities to do at the resort. Yes. And right there, they also had shuffleboard, which I always think is a good time. And then one thing that we saw people doing, we just walked, but you could rent a bike and they have a pathway that safely takes you under the, the street to get to the other side of their property where they have a big recreation complex. So that's where you'll find basketball, tennis courts, pickleball. They had a really cool nature trail. Um, they call it a treasure trail. And so you, you're going kind of in the woods on this path. And along the way, they have all of this information that they've written out for you to kind of be learning different it's almost like a scavenger hunt. So it's telling you what kind of birds you might see and be looking looking out for those. So that was super cute. It was not a long walk at all, but we did see people biking that. Cute. Sounds great. Um, let's talk about dining a bit at the resort. So what types of dining options are there at Vero Beach? Yeah, so I was really pleased with the dining there. The food quality was great as well as the accessibility. So they do have their quick service restaurant is located in a building right off of the pool. And there you'll find um, pretty basic, you know, chicken tenders, burgers, euros. But they also had a salad bar where you could, you know, select the things you wanted in it. They also had grab and go fridges like you see at a lot of the Disney resorts. If you just want to, um, you know, go grab a pre-made sandwich or a treat. Um, the other fun thing is they do have Dole Whip machines there, which is fantastic. So you can get all of your Dole Whip needs met. The seating there, they had a nice bar kind of overlooking the water, but it was mostly because it's so close to the pool. The idea is that you're taking your food and you're then going to one of the tables right around the pool to eat. So that was their quick service. And then they had a fantastic table service restaurant that's located in the main building. Um, and it serves breakfast. And they just started a couple months ago actually doing a character breakfast on weekends. I was going to um, ask has, if there are characters mm, there. That's so fun. Yes. So we did not, there's not just characters walking around, right? But they do this character breakfast just on weekends. They just started, I think they're, they're kind of testing it out. Um, and then the restaurant's also open for dinner. And it was absolutely fantastic. One of the best table service meals I've ever had at Disney. Um we did, you know, appetizer, entree, dessert, and every, everything was great. I would highly recommend it. And it's, we were, there was a covered patio enclosed area that, that we were sitting in. It was just really lovely watching um, kind of families walk by and the, um, it wasn't right on the ocean, but you're looking at where you walk to the ocean. It was just really, really lovely. And nice. then the other area that we really loved in the lodge, I want to make sure I get the name right. A green cabin room was upstairs 
And this was a cafe. So this is where you could go in the morning to get specialty coffee. Um, they had some pastries. And what was so cool, this room is also, it's it doubles as a game room. So it's a bar, it's a coffee shop, but then it's a game room for families where they have all of these games. You can just come and sit, check out. It's a fun nautical theme room where they even had like the the map on the ceiling, very fun. But then you could walk outside and you're up on the second floor and you are able to overlook the ocean from up there. So that awesome. was gorgeous. And and then in the evenings, they're open for cocktails and light bites. So that was a really fun spot. And I was traveling again in June with, with some girlfriends and one is a former barista who also goes to Disney a lot and deemed it the best Disney coffee she's ever had. Ooh, Good to hear. So did you notice that in the evening when it's a cocktail bar, were kids still allowed to be like playing the games and stuff with their parents? Hey guys, I wanted to quickly share about a cool way you can support the show. Travel content creating and podcasting is so fun. But as you travel lovers know, traveling can get expensive. While I may receive trades from time to time, the flights, the behind the scenes hours filming, editing, recording, and sharing are often unseen and unpaid. There is this super cool website called buymeacoffee.com that was created specifically as a way to support creators like me. Buying Me a Coffee is a quick and simple way to show your support for the Trip Tales podcast. And Lord knows this busy mama three could use a coffee to keep me recording and sharing and maybe help with the grocery bill as well. I'll also give a special shout out by name to anyone who buys me a coffee in the following week's episode. So if you love Trip Tales, I'll put the link in the show notes or you can get there by visiting buymeacoffee.com slash Kelsey Graves. Thank you for considering supporting the show. I think you could still be up there. We were not actually up there at night. So I would need to do a little more research than that before we brought our family back. But I think that you, I think that you can. Yeah. I love that about Disney. That so many times you can bring kids into those places. And so mom and dad can enjoy a cocktail. And then if there were games to play, you could all kind of hang out there together. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. I know you were here on more of a girl's trip. Do you feel like people typically leave the Disney Resort at Vero Beach and explore other stuff in the area or are most people kind of staying put the whole time? Yeah, so I do think that this is more of a destination. You are coming here and you'll even see when we talk about Hilton Head, there are more on-site dining options here because there is is less right around. Um, if you are driving and have a car, there are places within 15 minutes, great local restaurants that you can go to. I have a list for when I want to go back and I want to try those. Um, but I, when I envision going back with our family, we want to go this summer, I'm envisioning we're being here. And the other thing is that the villas have full kitchens. So that's one thing, you know, we can, we can talk about, but it's so fantastic that when you're staying in the one bedroom, two bedroom villas, you have a full kitchen. You can, again, a reason to drive or get groceries delivered. You can be doing a lot of cooking there. Um, I do have one of the girls we were with um, has family in the area. And so she was giving some ideas for things that she would recommend doing. And, And one thing she mentioned was Fort Pierce. Everything's more of a day trip. So she mentioned Fort Pierce, which is about 40 minutes away. If you have um, kids who are interested, there's a a Navy SEAL museum there, some neat trails, restaurants. She mentioned they've done a trip before where they did a day trip to baseball training in Mm -hmm. in Jupiter. So that's, that's, I looked it up about an hour and 20 minutes away. So again, it would be almost if you're staying for longer, you don't want to have a beach day every single day, maybe breaking it up and, and going further. But I think if you're without a car, I would plan a trip that's the amount of days that you want to be there. Got it. Good to know. And then I know it's not the same as being at a Disney resort in Orlando, you know, on the Disney property, but what are kind of some of the Disney touches and some of the little magic that you still kind of feel that makes it still feel Disney, even though you're not at one of those resorts over by the theme parks? Yeah, absolutely. I think the first thing that stands out to me in both of these properties is just the level of care to customers, um, the cast members that you meet, it's that same warmth and just the going above and beyond to make sure you are having, you know, the best vacation. And 
I think um, also just the recreation options that are open. You'll see a lot of really familiar things. If you've done any at a resort, they, you know, both of these, you can do your Mickey tie dye t-shirts and there's just these sweet little things like, oh, we, you know, this is something we love to do when we're going other places. They, um, Vera Beach also does campfires at night with the complimentary s'mores. We went there and it was so fun. And I'm telling you the cast members who were there, they were incredible. And they did it where it, it was story time as well. So they had these like group stories they were telling. They they were fantastic. And then they were doing a group sing-along followed by the s'mores and the campfire. So all of that felt like, okay, I know this. You know, th- it felt it felt like home. Um, and then even, this is so silly, but just some of the maybe favorite foods that you like to get at Walt Disney World, being able to get those here from, you know, things like Mickey pretzels and um, Mickey ice cream bars, you know, the, um, the Dole Whip, all of that's pretty fun to, to walk into as well. It sounds like a great place for a family that does love Disney and likes that um, attention to care that Disney's so good at with families, but maybe just wants more of a chill beach vacation this time around. Yes. And I would definitely, you know, on the flip side, let people know it's not, you're not bringing your autograph book here. There are not just characters walking around. Another Disney touch, they do um, pin trading. If you have people who are into the Disney pin trading, you'll see that. But it is, it's more just if you love the the vibe of Disney, but maybe not the over, over the top. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Okay. Before we move on to Hilton Head, is there anything else about Vero Beach that you had noted that you want to make sure we cover off on? Yeah. I think just noting um, the different types of rooms that you're able to book in the main building, there is an inn, which is more like uh, the hotel where you're getting cleaning every day, housekeeping, And that's where, if you're interested in ocean view, where you want to be, those rooms are up higher and you have the ocean views there. And then there are the separate buildings that are the Disney Vacation Club buildings where you're able to stay in a studio, one bedroom villa, two bedroom villa. And the one thing I just want to note is with the studios, you just have a kitchenette. So you don't have a full kitchen in those. You also do not have a washer and dryer. So if those things are important, make sure you do a one bedroom or two bedroom villa. For us, I love, you know, my my husband loves to cook. And so for him getting to have a full kitchen, that's part of vacation for him, where what draws me to it is the washer and dryer. I'm like, yes, we don't have to have wet beach towels and all this kind of stuff. Got it. Awesome. Thanks for explaining all of that. And if that is confusing to anybody, remember, you can just reach out to Courtney and she'll tell you exactly where you should stay. Okay, let's move on to Hilton the Head Island Resort. Um, From the resort website, it says that it's located on the picturesque coast of South Carolina, that it's an elegant, relaxing home away from home fashioned after a 1940s hunting and fishing lodge that combines local charm and simple pleasures with outdoor fun for the entire family. And also this resort has multi-room villas, lots of recreational activities, And it says 12 miles of heavenly beaches. So tell us about arriving to this resort and the first impressions that it gives you. Um, This one, when you first walk up, it is much smaller. So it's, it's not trying to go for that Disney deluxe resort feel. It is modeled after a fishing lodge. So you walk in and it's cozy and it, it feels like home. And it's, you know, you have that same customer care of the cast members greeting you, um, but it's not that grand lobby with everything in it. So it's a sweet little room with a pool table and some sofas. And then there are different buildings with all of the accommodations. And again, you have those same categories of the studios, the one bedroom villas, two bedroom villas. There are some three bedroom villas, but those typically do get booked up by Disney Vacation Club members. Um, And so this resort, it's a little more um, compartmentalized with the buildings. And then you still do have a great pool area. But the biggest thing to note is that it is not directly on the beach. And that surprises a lot of people, even, you know, when you're reading that description, that's not noted in there. So you have to note that and know how to navigate that. And we can get more into that. Okay. Great to know. I had kind of read that in my research last night. All right. Before we talk about the beach, then let's talk about, let's talk about what the rooms kind of look like and feel like in terms of a vibe and a decor and kind of some of the rooms you've stayed in. 
Yeah. So this is actually really exciting because they all just got renovated. The renovations just finished. Oh, So nice. the two times in the past that I have stayed there have been the older rooms. And while they were still nice, they did feel older in that they were just darker colors. It was kind of going for a different vibe and they were not the space saving furniture and things that we're now seeing in the villas. All of that has now changed where they do now reflect the Murphy beds that, you know, come down in the living room, much more open kitchens, much more space. Um, the colors are still, a, it. they did a, such a great job. So it's brighter, but they didn't go for that. Like it's not a beachy tropical feel. It's, it's more of like warm characters, but they brought in some of those Disney characters. So I have um, seen everything through the trainings and the videos I've been watching. And we're just so excited to get to stay in a two bedroom villa in October and see it all in person for the first time. Yes, that's so exciting. I'll have to follow you so that I can see what the rooms look like when you go. And the other um, really cool thing about about Hilton Head when you're staying in your in your room is that you're overlooking the marsh, which so I even though I am uh, born and raised in Nashville, now call South Carolina home. And, and in the last 20 years, the marsh is for some reason what just kind of draws me in. I love it. It like relaxes my soul. And so I love when you're able to stay here, you can put in a request for um, uh, whatever kind of, you know, bill you're getting that overlooks the marsh. And I just think it is gorgeous and calming and sitting out on, they just have the most giant balconies with these great tables that seat for overlooking that is just really lovely. Awesome. Um, tell us kind of about the grounds, like the, the main pools and the pool options. And then we'll probably also get into the beach because I think there's a pool over by the beach, but that's a little bit yes. more removed. So kind of explain the pool and beach situation. Yeah. So on the resort side where you're, where you're located, you are situated right across from an area called Sh Shelter Cove Marina. So when you're driving up, you'll see all of that. There are great um, restaurants, dining, we can get in more to that things to do. And then the property, it's again, it's a bit more like if you we're picturing just a, a regular beach condo situation you might go to with multiple buildings. So that's what it's going to look like. If you're driving, you're going to park your car by your building and walk in. But then once you are on the interior side, everything feels like that Disney bubble that you're used to. So as you're walking between the buildings, you'll see grills that you can use again, because most of the rooms are, ha you know, have those kitchens. Um, you'll see they have little putt putt along the way, lots of hammocks. It's, it's a much more just um, relaxed vibe, even then I would say Vero Beach is relaxed, but this is just even more so like you are here to chill. Um, and that's the that's the feel of it. It's really nice. Just a hammock marsh. There's a great playground in the middle for kids. And then the pool is very close. Again, no matter where you are staying, it's not a big property. The pool is close. It's more compact. Um, you have another great water slide. Then there's a smaller pool area that has um, a little kind of play feature in it, hot tub. So all of that is very compact. And you can even, some of the buildings actually overlook the pool. So you can even have a have a view of the pool that's very close. So something you could request or not request. And then how this property is um, situated, it, it goes up. And so on the second level, you actually have a little quick service restaurant. You have those great marsh views. Um, you have a recreation area down by the pool. Everything's just more compact, but it's so sweet. That's where you'll go and you'll do your crafts, you know, like your Mickey tie dye, your other little um, sand art that they do. There's some ping pong tables down there. So it's really, it's really wonderful to be able to be so close from, you know, wherever you are, even if you're not doing the pool to go to that recreation area, just for some of those games or crafts. Again, they're doing the activities in the pool. Um, there are, depending on the day, we experienced, sometimes there are cast members from upstairs in the in the little quick service restaurant area who are walking down, taking your order poolside. Sometimes you're just walking up the stairs to, to go order. Both are very easy. And then how do you get to the beach? <laughs> yes. It's the big question, where is yeah. the beach? So the beach is a mile away in an area called Palmetto Dunes. And so you have three options to get there. 
Um, if you're driving, you can actually just go and park at the Disney Beach House. That's what we have chosen to do just because we do bring some stuff with us when we're going to the beach. Um, and your room key, you'll just show it. There's, there's a security entrance and then you're getting in to go park at the Disney Beach House. You can also bike. And once again, you're able to rent a bike there. You can bring your own bikes and they have a secure underground path where you're able to safely get from the resort to the beach house. They also run a Disney shuttle continuously. So that's the other option. It looks just like when you're staying at a well, Disney World resort, you'll see the bus stop. You just go and wait there. It's not the big Disney bus. It's like a smaller van, but that's running continuously for guests. But that is something to just be aware of. You are not here going back and forth between the main resort pool with the water slide to the beach. But like you said, and we'll talk about, there is a pool at the beach club and it's wonderful. Okay. So you take the shuttle or you drive. I feel like a lot of people probably, at least people I know probably because I'm from Nashville, drive to Hilton Head. And so you've got your car, you drive over to the beach. What's the beach house and the beach like there? Yeah. So when you first park in the parking lot and you're walking in to the beach house, you're using your room key to get in. And when you walk in, you see this really nice um, pool. It, there are no lifeguards there. So that's something that's very different and worth noting. And there's no um, extra things here. There's no water slides, just, just a pool. Great pool though. And around it, you have a bar, you, you have a wonderful in indoor game room for if you get hot, there's a TV on in there, playing Disney, you know, movies, there's a pool table, just a great hangout area. There's plenty of covered tables with foosball around, um, great seating. And then they have a quick service restaurant as well. That's, that's fantastic. All of the, again, the, the Mickey ice cream treats you want. Um, and so what's, what's neat about that is when you're at that pool, then you do have direct access to the beach. So once you get there, <laughs> you know, you're, you're not at your resort uh, where you're staying anymore, but once you get that mile and you're at the beach club, then you can very easily go back and forth between the pool and the beach. And then you, it's, a lovely section of the beach. The beach itself is not a private beach. So anybody could, you know, come onto the beach. They cannot get into the secured access of the Disney beach house from there. So you do kind of just like if you were planning any Hilton head beach day, if you want to like get there early and great, get a great spot on the beach, you know, you want to go, you can set up for this one, there's not beach chairs that you're renting through Disney because then that's the public beach, but there is a place that you can ride on the beach, get your chairs, but you can also, if you're driving, bring stuff, which is what we have done. Nice. And is the beach wide? I know at Vero Beach, we talked about how narrow that beach was. Is this beach a little, yes, feel a little this different? Beach, absolutely. Wide, um, plenty of space. So, you know, it gets tricky in terms of, okay, you have to work a little bit harder to get there, but yeah. then once you're there- it's, it's the superior of the two beaches. Um, what we tended to do, we've, we've been there twice. Um, we're going for a third time as a family. And what we have tended to do is we decide that morning, okay, is this going to be a, we start at the pool day at our, at the resort, or are we starting over at the beach house? And, and we got in a habit of kind of alternating, right? And so, okay, if we're doing, because we are setting up items on the beach. And so for my husband, it's like, if we're going to set up on the beach, we're going to be here for a while. Yes. <laughs> so we got in that habit of like, okay, we can go back to the water slide pool in the evenings if it's our beach day, but let's just choose. This is where we are for the day. We're going to eat lunch here or pack sandwiches and have a, have a true beach day. And that is the best vacation when you, the main decision of the day is beach or pool. That's my favorite That's vacation right. decision. It's like, uh, we're truly on vacation if that's our biggest decision of the day. Yes. And, you know, there was something kind of nice. I remember the first time thinking, I don't know how this is going to go with this little, you know, drive back and forth. But it was kind of nice when that the kids did start to get, you know, restless at one location. Then it's like, okay, let's go back to this. And then it felt like this whole other fun thing. And so we actually lasted longer, which I would stay out on like the beach pool all day. My goal is always to get my family to do the same. And so I actually, it worked out pretty well. Yeah. It's nice to have like a, a true change of scenery when you need to get everybody going in a different direction. 
it was also nice when you had that pool so close to the beach and it'd be, it would be the same at Barrow as well. But, you know, my husband could stay up with one kid at the pool while I could take some others down to the beach. And it was just really easy to, to go back and forth. And we kind of kept our beach stuff set up for the day until we were ready to leave, which was nice. Nice. Sounds lovely. Um, speaking of changing scenery and stuff, do you typically go off property here, like across the street to that little area that you had talked about? Yes. So I think with Hilton Head, you're really missing out if you just stay in one place. I mean, there's just so much there. And so, you know, you have that little area, Shelter Cove, that does have fantastic restaurants, um, a great ice cream place, but also the stage with almost nightly entertainment, especially during the high season, different bands, um, comedians, even fireworks some nights. But then you also have all of when you go into Sea Pines and Harbor Island, and that's where, you know, I think when people think about um, Hilton Head, you know, the lighthouse or some of those more, I don't know, iconic spots. Um, that's where we end up spending some time. We have some friends who have houses in Hilton Head. And so sometimes we'll go and, and see them and plan a day where, um, okay, we're going to go for the evening after we've done our beach day at Hilton Head. And we're going to go eat dinner at our favorite little Mexican restaurant over there and then grab ice ice cream and um, they have a fantastic playground there. And so I, I do think in that sense, Hilton Head can be more of that traditional beach vacation that some people are used to where you go hard at the beach and pool all day and then you're coming back and, you know, showering and going out for a, a nice evening, you know, dinner. There's just so many restaurant choices. And, and one thing that I love, and this is the case for Vero Beach too, um, but if you ask any of the cast members, they're prepared to tell you all of their favorite local restaurants. They have lists of those. And so when we went last time, we actually asked the cast member, I, you know, I'd kind of, we've eaten at a few handful of favorites since we're close. I was like, I want to see what they tell us. And, and so it was fun getting to try some, you know, new places that they recommended and, and discovering some new areas. Again, that was all easier because we had a car. None of that, the Shelter Cove area, is walkable. Everything else you, you are having to drive. Okay. Um, and it is great that you can go across the street and get some other restaurant options because when I was looking at the website, I couldn't tell, it didn't seem like there was that much dining at the Hilton Head property. There is not. I think that that is a big thing to note. You have to go into it with the mindset either of you're bringing groceries or you're getting groceries delivered and you are utilizing that full kitchen or you are going out to eat. Yeah. Um, even the quick service that's on the resort side, it is not open past typically 5 p.m. I think it's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And so there's there's not a dinner option. That's what <laughs> so I thought have, I was seeing. I was like, is there no dinner option in terms of like there is, restaurants? No, yeah. there is not a dinner option. So you have to either, again, have a plan for some restaurants and, and know if you don't have a car, you know, so you're Uber, you know, Ubering, lifting places or or doing groceries. Um, they do have upstairs off the little quick service. There's a gift shop. Both, both of the resorts have gift shops that feel very familiar. All your fun Disney stuff you want. They have that grab and go fridge that has Mickey ice cream bars. And so we have gotten into a little habit of every night when we kind of come back, our last thing we do is we go up, get an ice cream bar and sit at this great um, outdoor area that overlooks the marsh. There's a whole area. We haven't even talked about all the recreation options here, but there's a whole area where you can crab and fish. And, and then that quick service restaurant that's at the beach house, it is not open in January and February. So, you know, you just have to be prepared. A lot of that is, and this is, I, I mentioned that you can get into Hilton Head during the off season easier because you're really, if you come in the off season when it's really cold, the January, February months, it's almost would be more of your home base as you're going and doing other things, you know, in Hilton Head or even doing a day trip to Savannah, which is just about 50 minutes away. Um, if it's less than 50, 50 degrees or less, the pools actually close, which I mean, is happens a good bit in January and February here in South Carolina. So just knowing that it's possible you would get there and pools would not be open. And so for our family, we have gone in the summer and spring break, and this will be the first time coming up that we're going over fall break. It will not be, the pools will be open. It will probably be colder than I want to be in them. We'll see how the kids do. But so this trip, I'm really looking at 
planning more activities, more excursions. We actually had a dolphin tour booked last time and it got canceled due to their boat um, broke. And so I'm excited to book that again. One really cool thing is that some of those dolphin tours, they will pick you up right at the Disney resort. So I think that's fantastic. The one we booked was um, called Donuts with Dolphins, which I mean, just, you know, sounds, (laughs) sounds great. So I'm hoping to do that again. Um, I have always wanted to go to Defusky Island, which is where Pat Conroy taught, where his book Water is Wide is um, set. And so you, there are a lot of tours that will take you, you know, pick you up even at the Disney Resort, take you on a ferry over there. And so I'm excited about looking at what does it look like to plan a trip that's not as beach focused. And is this still a good, you're getting those recreation activities still, you know, maybe we'll do more fishing, biking, some of that recreation. You're still getting that those fun Disney experiences in the evening, the campfires, the bingo. Um, but then you have all of these other things you can do in Hilton Head. So I'm hoping it's going to be a, a fun mix. Yeah. And I kind of love that, you know, it's it encourages you to explore more of Hilton Head and not just stay in your Disney bubble. Like it's kind of fun to get showered and go explore one of the local restaurants or go off property and do an excursion. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. And even just if you go over to the lighthouse, I mean, I think it's only $7 to go up in that. And that's so fun for kids. And even, you know, be warned, there's like a little gift shop of just silly things at the very top that my kids could just sit all day at and try to figure out, you know, what they want to spend their $10 on, but just little fun things like that, where it doesn't matter what the weather is. You can go and have a little mini adventure. Yeah. Fun. Pricing wise, do you think these beach resorts and this type of beach resort vacation is a little bit more affordable than the Disney properties near the parks? So it really just depends on the time of year. Um, So for instance, I was pulling back up what we are paying when we go in October to Hilton Head. And again, you have to remember, even though it's our fall break, so it feels like such a steal that it's like, oh my gosh, we get to do this over fall break for um, three nights. It's the off season technically. And so we got a, I want to look it up to make sure I'm telling you right. We got a two bedroom villa um, for three nights. The total is $1,030. Wow. That's incredible. It's like, a fantastic deal, right? Yes. We have friends coming with us who I booked them a studio. They are in a studio for three nights for a total of $627. Yeah, that's incredible. I feel like so many of the Disney resorts now, that's like one night, $600. That's incredible. Exactly. Again, I think that's where when you can really be traveling at maybe those times that are school breaks for you, but might not be traditional high season. You can really get some great deals. And then what I found was interesting was this summer, I saw better availability and pricing for Vero Beach. So I think it's, you know, it's all based on demand and just kind of monitoring it and watching it. Um, When I was looking into pricing for December and this is, I mean, so big comparison, you're looking at this December, you could currently book Hilton Head Island or Vero Beach. This is not Christmas week. This was like December 10th week. Hilton Head Studio, 289. Vero Studio, 465. This is where it got really crazy to me. Hilton Head Island, two bedroom villa, 432. Two bedroom villa, same date, Vero Beach, $1,000. Wow. So you're just seeing that difference of in December in Hilton Head. Again, you're really using that more as your home base. You're getting to do some of the fun activities, but you're maybe not getting to do as much of the cool beach activities as you would if you were going further down south to Vero Beach. And I think the prices reflect that. Yeah. I know pricing could be an issue for people and that might help them decide. But for someone who is interested in trying one of these Disney beach resorts for the first time, do you have a recommendation on which one they try first? I think if you want um, just an all-encompassing you are going to stay on property, I would do Barrow Beach. Um, Especially if you can get in at a time where you can be there for all of the sea turtle things, when it's warmer, where you're really able to utilize everything that's so close, that would be my pick. The proximity to both ports and Port Canaveral and Port Everglades and Port Lauderdale and Walt Disney World. I mean, it would just pair so nicely with all of those. Um, so that would be my pick if you wanted to just try one and you're like, we're going to stay here and we want to experience it all that the dining, the activities, the pool and the beach. And I know this is probably impossible for you, but do you have a favorite between the two? 
So, you know, I think because I am more familiar with Hilton Head, it's where we've been more, it's, it's in our state, I feel a little just sentimentality towards that and something about that. It feels like home for both of those things and that it has those Disney touches. But again, also it's that South Carolina low country marsh that I, that I love. So personally, I just love um, Hilton Head. We haven't taken a trip to Hilton Head. So yeah, this sounds kind of like a fun one for us to head that direction and do. I end every episode with a question, but since we're discussing two different resorts on this episode, you're going to get two questions. So if anyone out there is planning a trip to Vero Beach, what is it about Disney's Vero Beach Resort that would make you say, just book it? Yeah, I think if you have felt uh, maybe as a parent with younger children that a beach vacation feels overwhelming, just book Disney's Vero Beach. It could not be easier. Um, you will feel like you have won. I mean, it is getting all of the magic that you want from a beach vacation with very little effort. Perfect. And if anyone out there is thinking about planning a trip to Hilton Head, what is it about Disney's Hilton Head Island Beach Resort that would make you say, just book it? So I would say here, if you want a place that would be a great home base where you feel like you're coming back somewhere that is a break from maybe some of the busy hustle and bustle of Hilton Head, just book it. You get to go out into the crowds, do the restaurants, do the excursions, but then you're coming back to the sweetest resort imaginable with those marsh views. Amazing. I love it. Well, thank you so much for all this information, Courtney. And where can people find you if they need your services and they're like, this sounds amazing, but I need her to help me. Absolutely. I would be honored to. I am on Instagram and Facebook at Pixie Travel by Courtney, or you can send me an email at Courtney G at Pixie Travel CO.com. Okay, perfect. We'll put those in the show notes too, in case people need to double check and copy and paste. But thank you. You are a wealth of knowledge. It was so fun chatting this morning. And maybe we'll have to have you on again soon because I think that you've got a lot of information to share. I would be honored to. I just love listening to your podcast so much and learning and making my own list of places I want to visit. That wraps up another episode of Trip Tales. If you have a trip you'd like to share about on the podcast, email me at triptalespodcast at gmail.com and I'll add you to the schedule. Also, be sure to follow the show so that you don't miss any upcoming vacation destinations. And if you have an extra minute in your day, please leave a review for the podcast. It helps more than you could imagine. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next episode of Trip Tales.